The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. A very scary experience. You know, God is a solution. God is a 12-step. I, I like where he's going here. Helps the community grow, helps us grow. <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie has done a phenomenal job. Lack of open-mindedness. And you're talking about taking people through a spiritual process and getting them into recovery. Thanks, Monty, uh, and thanks for all your support. We need spirituality to make this thing work long-term. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. And now, broadcasting on location somewhere in the vast expanse of the Pacific Northwest, it's the over-opinionated 12-stepologist, The Monty Man. Welcome aboard, my friends. Welcome to Take 12 Recovery Radio uh, on your internet dial. It is Take12Radio.com. Uh, if you're listening on your smartphone, if you're listening on a tablet, uh, if you're not on the internet and you've downloaded this thing or you're, it's, it's being shared with you, uh, you can go to our website at Take12Radio.com. You can spell it out, the, uh, the word 12 or the number 12. I am your host, The Monty Man, and we are broadcasting on location here at the Harvest Festival for Come Rest a While. Now, what is Come Rest a While? Come Rest a While is a sober living home uh, and environment for women who uh, have got it, gotten into recovery and are seeking to continue their recovery and their walk of spirituality up here in the Pacific Northwest. And the Harvest Festival is, uh, uh, last year it was the alumni event. This year it's the Harvest Festival. The Harvest Festival It's being held at the TV Elks Club at 8350 Southwest Warm Street, Springs Street in Tualatin, Oregon. And uh, my, my first interview here is with Mike. Mike, what's your last initial, buddy? It's B. Mike B. Now, now Mike, it, it was great because we were setting up and you came up to the booth and you said, you're the money man. Yes, I've, <laughs> I've heard some of your speak, or some of the tapes you share. Uh, okay, so... Uh, you look you look pretty good today. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, all right, and uh, I'm assuming that was not always the case. True? Not always the case. No, no. And not what always was going that, on? Not always that I feel good. <laughs> um, I pretty much admitted complete defeat around drinking back in 1992. And to make a quick story of it, um, came in, was relieved of the obsession to drink, went to a lot of meetings for 20 years, but continued on uh, the, uh, the marijuana maintenance program. Ah, yes. Continued to take drugs, and it wasn't until last summer in July when a friend of mine passed from cancer that I realized that I didn't have an infinite amount of time to get this right, and I always just smelled like there was more to be had. And so I challenged myself. First, I prayed for the willingness to be willing to put down the drugs and uh, got myself a sponsor. I challenged myself to get a sponsor that had a connection with a power that was a lot more true than the one I had had, Um, and he put me through the work. (laughs) in the big book and really part of my um, recovery was he put me in touch with speakers um, like Mark Houston and Joe Hawk and some other big book enthusiasts and I did the steps as they were prescribed in the book. I actually had never thought that I would come clean on the fact that I had been smoking. I thought I had dodged a bullet there and in listening to some Mark Houston for some reason I was hearing that it was more important as long as I put more importance on what other people felt than what I felt that I was going to be in trouble. And so uh, when I was out of town in Idaho, I decided I would just go to a meeting that nobody knew me and I would be completely honest and let them know that I had uh, not done any drugs in about two months, but I had still carried a 20-year coin. And my tail end didn't fall off. I actually did feel a new freedom and a new uh, happiness and everything started to align once the secrets started coming out. So I called my sponsor, I admitted to him that I had done that, and I came back to Portland and gave back my 20-year coin and picked up a a one-day-at-a-time coin and still had never drank, but really started taking this um, as a way of life. 
I, I, you you mentioned I real quick I want to uh, let the listeners know you you mentioned Mark Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Houston uh, was the founder of the Mark Houston Center, which is in San Antonio, Texas. It is one of the gold standards in uh, drug and alcohol treatment. It's holistic, and uh, they they have sponsored us in the past. It is now better known as Benchmark Recovery Center. Uh, I just wanted to put a plug there because uh, he was such a great influence on so many people when he was alive, and obviously he was for you. Um, and, and, And so in saying that, one of the things that's really benefited you, you were sharing with me, was listening to speaker tapes. Now, we know there's there's nothing quite like, you know, a person-to-person meeting environment, but today, some of the meetings are lacking, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think Mark Houston and Don Pritz had talked about, Don was Mark's sponsor, about how most of the problems of AA could be resolved with good sponsorship. And I know that Chris Raymer talks about, you know, if you want to have, if you want to be an agent of change, then you have to show up for the business meetings and change those meeting formats that there's, you know, I know in the, I think it's the Dallas area that Chris talks about hundreds of discussion meetings and only a few literature based meetings. Um, you know, really the meetings where it's about solution. A lot of times I can sit in a room and it can go around and I have not, uh, you know, 45 minutes in, I haven't heard a single thing about a step or a power greater than oneself. Um, a lot of the problems of the day, which lead people to believe that the drinking is, you know, because of the outside situation, the outside stuff, um, which I think is my wrong, wrong belief system that I had applied to in the beginning, too, that it's an inside-out job. Um, when I review my history, I drank when things were good, I drank when things were bad, so I can't be under the belief system that my drinking was ever contingent upon that stuff. I had crossed over some invisible line and just couldn't make it back. Um, but, yeah, so... Today it's you know it's been a while too since I've felt like I needed a meeting. I don't. I have a program that that transcends meetings and a power and a connection and a relationship with a higher power that uh, I feel recovered. So I don't feel like I need a meeting. Where in the beginning I did. I needed it to get through. I needed that was my little pit stops sure. of serenity. Yeah. And now it's you know outside of that. So hopefully it's something that I can go to to be a part of. I I have a favorite uh, home group that I go to on Saturday mornings, and one morning I called my sponsor and I had missed the meeting. And he he was like, well, what did you miss? I was like, well, I missed the meeting. It's such a great meeting, and there's so many that aren't, but, you know, I get so much out of it. Um, You know, I just, I I missed it for the week, and I I feel bad about that. He's like, no, you, you missed the chance to carry the message. So that, you know, <laughs> zing me between the eyes knowing that, again, my problem is self- selfishness and self-centeredness. Right. And there I go again thinking it's all about me. But, yeah, the meetings, um, you know, to be able to go in and change the format and sometimes be that one person. And and it is something. Sometimes I can look around. and But then again, I, I, I just did meeting-based, you know, fellowship and fear recovery for 20 years. and now You were meeting-dependent. I was meeting-dependent. Yeah. And now when I go into a meeting and I share from the book or share from experience, because I don't want to, as Mark Houston said, share opinion on experience I don't have, you know, I will. I'll look around and people start tapping, tapping their fingers and kind of rolling their eyes and so forth. But, you know, hopefully it's for that one or two people in the room that really need something additional that, uh, you know, have tried meetings and it's only gotten them so far or it's gotten them drunk and, you know, are looking for somebody to take them through the book to do the work to hopefully have a new experience. Yeah. Well, you know, my, uh, Mike, I congratulate you. Um, and good stuff, my friend. Well, and so you. many people are missing out because they are meeting dependent. What happens when you can't get to the meeting or the meeting folds? You know, uh, we hope that you have a strong connection with a power greater than yourself. So let's move over here just for a second. <laughs> We're right next to the to the speaker. You're going to be playing some uh, some music here in just a second, but if we don't if we don't develop a relationship with God, uh, if we don't develop a relationship with a power that can do for us what we can't do for ourselves, then we're going to be in deep weeds, right? Oh yeah, um, I'd found you know, and I think Houston really led me to it. He was very pivotal in the beginning um, when I started when I re-upped on this journey um, to put my dependency to build a relationship and then put my dependency squarely there. <laughs> Because I realize now when it's on my fiance or the kind of car I'm driving or what I do for work that I walk around afraid all the time because that stuff can be changed and pulled out from underneath me and, and I act bizarrely. I act insanely, which is just not acting within proportion. Um, you know, now it's a lot. Uh, I, I haven't had the urge to have a drink or drug in a long time. I've been placed in that position of neutrality because of this power. But 
it's my thought life. You know, 10 says me to watch for certain things, but that means in my mind that I need to watch for those in my thoughts. That the second part of step two, when I first came, or step one, when I first came in, I thought, and a lot of people do, that it's clearly all because I was drinking and drugging. And if I just stop that, my life will become manageable. But my experience was when I stopped, without applying the principles of this program, these steps in my daily life, I stayed the same character that I was when I was drinking. I just wasn't drinking anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, man, you look good, and uh, it sounds like you're, you're, you're doing things the way it was lined out to do, and you're living a successful life today, and you're giving it back. So thanks for sharing with me, buddy. Hey, thank you, and thank you for your work you do and sharing it out. I mean, different... Um, you know, I'd listen to a lot of tape streaming from your site and so forth and just really appreciate the, uh, the service you do. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Talking with Mike here at the Come Rest and Wild Harvest Festival in Tualatin. Um, we have some entertainment coming up shortly with Julia. Um, there's lots of food. Um, I'd like to um, have all the people who were here early to uh, help set up um, stand up, please. Sarah, <laughs> Chelsea, Grace, Grace, Rachel, Kayla. All right, we're listening to uh, some of the introductions here at Come Rest Oh, who are the cooks? Cooks should come. Stacy, Radhika. Woo! We have had so much good donated food. Everybody should eat a lot. We can we can walk tomorrow. Um, Nancy, did you want to say something right now, or Nancy Eng Engelman coming up to the I've microphone? I've been on the board of directors for a couple of years, and I've really gotten to know Nancy and so much appreciate what she does for women. I don't know where the women uh, that are in recovery here. Uh, lived when they first got sober. I personally lived in a basement on a couple pallets with a, um, a mattress on the floor. Um, I don't know what would have happened if I'd had a nice place to live. I might not have gone to as many meetings. Um, but um, I, I think it's really nice. I, I also recognize that the, the women that live at Come Rest a Wild truly have a good community to start. Let me introduce to you Nancy and she is the founder and executive director, and she will tell you a little bit about um, Come Rest a While. Thank you. Thank you, Harriet, and welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to see everyone here, and I know more will be coming, and the board of directors, the, the members that are here, Ruth, Harriet, that's it. That's it right now. Yeah, who knows? Um, so many people have been helped and donated so many beautiful items. Be sure and check out the silent auction items and buy raffle tickets. So, yeah, we got a really great raffle ticket seller here. Yeah. So I want to thank all the volunteers who donated time, energy, talent, food, gifts to this we event. Can't hear you. You can't hear me. Is it on? Yeah. Just a little closer to your mouth. Okay. Can you hear me now? All right, yeah. And of course, the entertainment. Take 12 Radio with Monty. We're going to have Julia and Kate sing pretty soon. Have wonderful entertainment, music. There will be, um, Grace, hold something up for a silent auction. Just something. Yeah. What is that? It's a coach purse. Gorgeous coach purse. That's just one of the many. Beautiful items we have to bid on. This makes funny. All donations, all proceeds will benefit the women of Come Rest a While. So please, take something wonderful home for yourself or for a gift for someone. My personal favorite is the Bob Red Mills basket. That's because I like to cook. So they got a cookbook in there, an apron, everything you need, plus a package of products. So. Take a look at everything. Yeah, show something else. Nancy Engelman talking about the raffle prizes that are available here at the Come Rest of Wild Harvest Festival here in Swalton at the TV Elks Club. We're going to uh, take a short break, and when we come back, more interviews from this wonderful event 
helping to support the sober living environment of Come Rest a While up here in the Pacific Northwest. We'll be right back. Origins Recovery Centers provides integrated inpatient treatment for substance abuse and co-occurring disorders. At Origins, clients receive expert medical, clinical, and spiritual care individually designed for their needs. Our clients leave Origins with the foundation upon which they will build the rest of their lives. Call now to speak with an admissions specialist. Our toll-free number is 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, delivering real solutions for real families. Hey, this is Logan Rainman Rainwater, and you're listening to Big 12 Radio, the sounds of recovery and positive music. Well, welcome back. Uh, we are here, like I said uh, earlier, we're here in Tualatin at the TV Elks Lodge uh, celebrating the Harvest Festival being put on by Come Rest a While. Now, Come Rest a While is a sober living environment, uh, but that doesn't really express all that goes on there. So with me right now is Nancy Engelman. She is uh, really the one who uh, is primarily responsible for this event and so much more. Nancy, you've been working with women for a very long time. Tell us about it. How did, how did this start? It didn't start here in Tualatin, did it? No, it did not. No, actually, uh, my background, um, I worked in a women's program in Illinois in 1980, uh, for three years, I moved to the West Coast, and uh, I have various jobs in the field of alcohol and drugs and treatment. And then um, I I retired. <laughs> I put that in quotes. Yeah, really, huh? Because you don't look like you're retired, yeah, no. my friend. <laughs> I retired for a few years and met a woman that wanted to start a bed and breakfast for women in recovery. And a friend of ours knew that I wanted a retreat house. She got us together, and we started talking. And Mickey O'Connell and myself felt there was a need for positive housing for women in recovery from substance abuse. So we formed an organization. We opened the doors in the first house, July 1st, 2001. We are a nonprofit organization. And we have moved a few times to different houses better each time, found our permanent home in 2005 in Lake Oswego. Beautiful, beautifully furnished home, accessible to everything, and women come to us from all over the country. They're referred by treatment centers, um, if self-referrals are appropriate, come to us, go to outpatient or get a job or start school, whatever they need to do to stay clean and sober along with positive reinforcement with the 12-step program. So that's what we do, and we've been, I've been doing it since July 1st, 2001. My co-founder moved to Hawaii, lucky her, <laughs> but she's still in contact and supportive of us. So thank you. Now, now your facility, uh, your home is actually, is it in Lake Oswego? It is in Lake Oswego. Yeah, it's a beautiful, uh, some people would call it a campus, uh, but it's a beautiful home. And uh, you guys don't mess around. I mean, there are some, let's face it, there's some sober living homes, I won't mention them by name today, that are really kind of flop houses, you know? They really don't have any structure. They're self-governed. And um, a lot of people, they're supposed to be transitional, but they're not. A lot of people stay there for year after year after year, and they really don't go anywhere. But you guys stick to a pretty strict program and because you want to see these women succeed, true? Yes. Yes, they have to attend 12-step meetings while they're there. Yeah, it's a requirement. Yes. It's not just you, you should. Yeah. You have to at least three a week. I prefer more. I myself, I'm almost 40 years in recovery from alcohol, and I still go to five to seven meetings a week. I'm still involved in that 12-step process because I know it, that it works. Mm -hmm. Other, They've suggested, could I go to this or that? I said, sure, but you still have to go to three 12-step meetings a week if you're going to live here. And they stay, the average stay is six to nine months, but we have women stay a little over a year. And by then I say, you know, what are you going to do next? We work with them to see what their next goal is. Go to go to school, you know, all this. And so it's, um, it's a positive reinforcement to start a clean and sober life with the support 
of other women. And we sit down to dinner together and we take turns cooking. And I lived there up until this past April and they hired a live-in house manager so I don't have to go to Costco anymore. <laughs> I'm getting a little older, <laughs> but I'm going to be out and about in the community more doing PR and connecting with people who can help us. We're ready to really grow up. Right, right. Well, you, you do marvelous work, Nancy, and, and uh, you have been uh, recognized by, by several entities here in the Pacific Northwest. I congratulate you for your work. God bless you for all you do. You truly are doing God's work. And, yes, I was honored to be uh, the winner of the Freedom of Award from DePaul Treatment Centers a few years ago and also an Angel Award for Advocacy for Women um, from a place called the Red Dress Society. And uh, that was kind of funny. When I was first sober, there was a guy that kept saying, you're going to make it. You should be an advocate for women. And I went home and looked up advocate in the dictionary. So all these years later, he's gone now. His name was Druck. We called him Drucker. (laughs) And I said, when I got that advocacy award, I said, this is for you, Drucker. Also, I want to point out, over 500 women have come through our doors Wow! in the past 14 years, almost wow. 15 years. Yeah. So, and many of them are still sober. Some, many of them are here today helping their past yeah. residents. Yeah. And yeah. so that speaks well for us that they want to be connected to us. Uh, last year when you had the alumni event, this place got packed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Isn't it marvelous to see these women come it back? Is. It's wonderful to see. Yeah. And we're going to do more of this and bigger and different, but this every year. Yeah. So it's Good really for you. great. Good to be for here. you. Thank All you. All right. Talking with Nancy Engelman, uh, she is uh, really the one responsible for this event today and uh, really one of the founders of Come Rest the Wild, Supportive Community for Women in Recovery, located in Lake Oswego. You can visit their website at comerestawhile.org. Okay, I'm going to come over here really, really quick. Somebody's counting money, and I just want to talk to you Hi. really, uh, really fast because a lot of times people in service get overlooked when it comes to these things. What's your name? My name's Ruth. Uh, Ruth, you're right here at the door, and you're selling raffle tickets. Yes. And you're taking the money, which is it was only ten dollars, right? Right. It's only ten dollars admission. There is fabulous food. We have some entertainment, uh, both uh, DJ, you know part of music and now we have some live music piano and a singer it's great so come on down well thank you for your service and for what you're doing yeah. out here yeah, yeah thank you. you you bet god bless you it's all out as well god my are those are raffle tickets you've sold so far yeah this is this whole basket is oh full of raffle word. tickets so that, that's amazing yeah and then there's also a whole lot of um uh, silent auction prizes gift baskets uh, massage services yoga services all kinds of great great things it's a really amazing array something for everybody I, I, at last year and it's it's certainly looking like it again this year um the raffle prizes and the way it's set up it's the most organized beautiful thing i've ever seen and i've seen a oh. lot of them you guys do an awesome yeah. job yeah well i think that's thanks to nancy and the house manager ildi and then uh, the women who work in the house and a whole lot of volunteers it's really a great group effort thank you so much thank you thank you all right we're going to uh, come on in here to um, follow me. <laughs> Listen to a little bit of the music that's being provided here at the Come Rest of Wild Harvest Festival.
Come rest of the while, Harvest Festival in Tawalton, Oregon. All right, I'm standing here with uh, the person that is behind the marvelous voice. I love Georgia, Georgia on my mind. One of my favorite songs. I used to watch Designing Women. <laughs> I, well, no, I did too. In fact, I still try to find it on TV. <laughs> is, isn't it great? What is your name? My name's Julia. Julia, thank you for for your service today oh, yeah, for Come Rest a While. It's my pleasure. They're, they have made a huge impact on the community, and um, I've known many successful people that have come out of there and have turned their lives completely around to be able to help others with the same affliction. Right. And it just goes to show that um, our greatest weaknesses become our greatest strengths. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and I was talking to somebody else earlier, and I'm saying they look really good, but probably wasn't always that way for you either, right? No. There was a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, uh, I actually think it may be harder for people that are that do come in looking very, very nice because I think the yeah. look good can kill you. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Some, some of us are a little too smart to get it. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, I think all of us are. We would have gotten it a long time ago. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, this is definitely, this life is a sufficient substitute. And as an alcoholic, I still need a fix. And, yeah. And um, yeah. this has become my fix. And as my friend Grace always says, um, I heard her say that a long time ago, and it rang very true to me. Now, now events like this are so important. Mm-hmm. Because there's much more to recovery than just closed-minded discussion meetings. Yes. <laughs> That's true. I say that, you know, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, but there's much more than just meetings and service conventions. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If yeah. it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. I don't want right. to be. I don't want to. We are not a glum lot. No. No. Mm-hmm. And if we are, something's up. Exactly. Yeah. Something's or something's down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and you know on that note, I just want to make a plug for outside help. There are yes. many of us that need outside help. It is okay to need outside help. It's very normal. We suffer from the disease of alcoholism. And before, I don't know about you, but before there was ever the alcohol, there was the ism, and I needed something to help me. And alcohol worked until it killed, almost killed me. And uh, and uh, there's there's plenty of outside help for people like us. It's not weird. It's normal. And um, and I just want to say it's okay to have it. I, I'm so glad to hear you say that because there are some purists out there that think that this is all we need. And you know, as of the last ten years, we've heard a lot about dual diagnosed treatment, mm-hmm. and not all treatment is, but right. just about ninety nine point nine percent of us are right dual diagnosed. So yeah, there's other things going on besides right. the substances. In fact, I haven't met anyone in the program that hasn't suffered from some form of anxiety or depression before they ever picked up a drink. It's that feeling of feeling like you don't fit in, feeling like there's nowhere for you to be, feeling like yeah. um, feeling like um, everybody else got the manual but you. And for me, that started way before I picked up a drink. But 
the great thing is, is I had no shot at getting a real diagnosis until I got sober. And when I got sober, I got a correct diagnosis, and I got a treatment plan through a doctor that I have to follow, just like anybody that has mm-hmm. cancer or diabetes, diabetes but, yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. And as long as I follow it, I get to live a happy life. Um, mm-hmm. I don't get to make the rules on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you, you've done a great job. You look great. You sound marvelous. Thank you. What, what a great gift. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for giving it away. Some people don't do that. They well, keep it to themselves. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> if I could, I would, but I can't. <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking to me. You're going to be singing some more, right? Yes, and my little sister Katie is going to be singing as well. And um, she is also one of us. And I'm grateful to have somebody in my family that I can share this with. Oh, right on. We look forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a uh, short break. And when we come back more here at the Come Rest a While Harvest Festival in Tualatin, Come Rest a While is located in Lake Oswego. Visit their website at comerestawhile.org. We'll be right back. AA made all the difference in my life. I noticed that most of the goals I had as a kid were slipping by. I didn't feel like the person I hoped to be. After all those years of drinking, I, I really didn't know myself. When I was out there drinking, I was always looking for the next great party to make me feel all right. With AA, I found a better way of life. And I feel good in my everyday life, even without a drink in my hand. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or aa.org. All righty. Welcome back. Uh, Thanks for tuning in to Take 12 Recovery Radio. I am the Monty Man here on location in Tualatin, Oregon. We are at the Come Rest a While Harvest Festival being held at the TV Elks Lodge on Warm Spring Street in Tualatin. Uh, Come Rest a While puts on a yearly event. This is our second year with them. I I have the uh, brochure for Come Rest a While, and I want to share that with you. Uh, I'm just going to read directly from this so you get a better understanding of what this is all about. Come Rest a While is a supportive community for Women in Recovery. It's located in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and uh, their website is www.comerestawhile.org. Uh, this is a beautiful location. The mission, mission of Come Rest a While is to offer a safe, supportive environment in a family setting for women in recovery from substance abuse. The goal of Come Rest a While is to foster responsibility to self and others, a sense of community and a clear recognition of who and what we really are, followed by a sincere attempt to become what we could be, all of which enhances the chance of long-term successful recovery. Our residents benefit from a healthy start in new sobriety, forming connections with other sober women, emotionally supporting each other, sharing their experiences, and developing friendships. Visitors are welcome, and tours are available by appointment. We are dedicated to providing a comfortable home for women in recovery. A monthly fee includes the following. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Kate. I'm an alcoholic. Hey. Hi. We'll, hold, we'll hold on there. Um, and thank you very much to all the ladies that come rest a while, these kind folks from the radio, all of you for showing up and throwing all of your money at the house. It's a wonderful cause. When I was 34 days sober, I moved in there and I stayed sober. So there's hope for everything. Do you want me to turn it up? Yay! Yay, alive and happy. Hooray. Um, (laughs) Yay, life. Okay. So um, alcoholism is a family disease, as you know. This is my sister, Julie. Real live sisters, too. Julie is one we just interviewed here a few minutes ago. Julie and Katie are going to be performing. We have no use for her. <laughs> so, uh, we'll start this, talking about something that sounds terribly tragic, and everybody else in the family will go, and we'll be laughing hysterically. Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a song that I wrote many, many years ago, and it, once I listened to everything that I wrote for that record, I realized that that entire thing was a first step. So <laughs> here is a song about a first step. I stumbled around 
downtown last night. Sidewalk meditation and self medication. Neon signs. And I thought I saw you. Yes, I do think about you Mostly late at night well, I've heard a song on the guitar Just the other day Back porch, brown bottle blues You select my band to play song was over You know I felt alright Yes I do think about you Mostly Kate and Julie, Kate and Julie, Kate singing back and forth an original and song. Beautiful. Okay, Julie is uh, getting ready to perform. Make it that way 
We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back with more from the Harvest Festival. Here hosted by Come Rest a While. Visit their website at comerestawhile.org. We'll be right back. This is Steve Green, and you're listening to the best of recovery talk and positive music. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www www.therapia.net Therapia Addiction Healing Center Restoring lives one step at a time All right, uh, welcome back Welcome back to the Harvest Festival Hosted by Come Rest a While uh, I'm going to continue reading uh, from their brochure uh, Come Rest a While is dedicated to providing A comfortable home for women in recovery A monthly fee includes the following a shared, fully furnished room, laundry facilities and supplies, utilities, cable, and Wi-Fi, access to public transportation, volunteer transportation to 12-step meetings, medical and business appointments, advocacy and support in legal situations, and gosh knows we have those, random drug and alcohol testing, live-in management with long-term recovery, and experience in the field of addiction. Random drug and alcohol testing, of course, uh, as I said before, information and referral to outside resources as requested. 
There are a wide variety of 12-step meetings available in the Portland metropolitan area and many within walking distance of the Come Rest a While uh, house. The qualifications for residency at Come Rest a While are as follows. Women who demonstrate a willingness and ability to stay clean and sober, actively participating in a recovery program, regularly attendance at 12-step uh, recovery meetings and working a recovery program, adhering to all requirements in uh, the Tennessee, Agre Tennessee Agreement, participating in house meetings, responsibilities and functions, employed, seeking employment, enrolled in school, and or attending an outpatient treatment program or counseling. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you are interested, or if you know somebody who would benefit from Come Rest a While, please visit their website at comerestawhile.org. All the contact information is there. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and give you uh, their address. Uh, you can uh, write them at Come Rest a While, P.O. Box 1116, Lake Oswego, Oregon, 97035. And you can call them at 503-635-0102. Well, it's nice and fresh out here, isn't it? It feels beautiful. <laughs> the rain, it's no beginning. And you are? I am Stacy. Hi, Stacy, And? I'm Grace. Grace, Stacy, and Grace. Yeah. And tell me what your affiliation is with Come Rest a While. Well, I have been... <laughs> um, affiliated with Come Rest a While since 2001. Well, long, um, long time. Long time. Um, I did not stay sober for any length of time until 2004, mm -hmm. and then I stayed sober for eight years, uh, relapsed, and now I am back at the house again. So it's been here for me every time. Oh, you're looking good. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and like I said earlier, not we weren't always looking good, right? Oh, no, no, absolutely. Right. So, Grace, A lot what less about than good. <laughs> what about you? What was your story? Um, I met Nancy um, and and visited Come Rest Well for the first time when I was in treatment at Hazelton, and I was designated driver to drive one of the girls from <laughs> Hazelton out to to visit Come Rest Well. And had the honor of meeting Nancy that day. Um, wasn't looking for myself, but helping this young woman and. And as it turned out, uh, three years later, went to live at Come Rest Well myself. So in 2011, I had the supreme um, honor of being a guest at Nancy's home, and and for about five months, and having some of um, the most incredible moments of sobriety that sobriety has ever given me. What what's it like to see people, alumni, and friends return to an event like this? Uh, knowing that you know life throws things at us, but a lot of these a lot of these women, you know, have stayed clean, have stayed sober through it, and they come back. What's it like to see that? Oh, it's so emotional. Today's emotional. I've been yeah. feeling like crying several times just sure. watching it all and just thinking of how lucky we are all to have this community and have each other. What's it like for you, Grace? Um, I have to agree with Stacy. There's something else also. I, a lot of the women in this room, St Stacy and I have literally as grown women grown up with wow. in recovery and and here we are today some with their babies and mm -hmm. and um <laughs> and uh we've all come an awfully long way and it and and it's all on the wings of nancy really yeah, yeah. yeah. she she's something else isn't she's she? awesome she's uh she's beyond words yeah. yeah she she's amazing i, I met her a couple of years ago at the sober portland networking event and she just she just blew my mind yeah i mean uh what humility, what grace, what, what service that, that she provides. She's committed her life to it, um, yeah. gladly. And with compa compassion, non, not the most non-judgmental person I've ever known. Anytime that I've been in trouble, I call her up and she's there. And you know what? There's not very many people that are like that after so many times. But you know? she, don't, she don't mess around, though, either. No, no, oh, no, gosh, no. She doesn't no. take any crap. Yeah, no. you're, you're not going to pull the wool over her uh -uh. eyes. No. <laughs> I'm an actress, and apparently she said to one of my people recently, now you be careful of that grace. She's an actress. She'll pull one over on you. <laughs> well, Stacey and Grace, thanks for talking with me. Sure. Thank you. All, all right. Thank I'll you let you get back here. to enjoying the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you for all being right. here. You bet. Stacey and Grace. With Come Rest a While for some time, uh, as you can tell, this is, this is a, uh, I can't even call it a facility. This is a sober living home and environment that is extremely welcoming and extremely successful. Please visit their website, comerestawhile.org. 
All right, I'm, I'm standing here with two very attractive, very wide-eyed, bushy-tailed folks. <laughs> and, and one of them's name is, what's your name? My name is Christy. Okay, and Christy? This is Kyla. Hi, Kyla. How old is Kyla? Kyla is 14 months. Kyla is 14 months. Absolutely adorable. You are adorable. You want to touch the microphone? No. Oh, okay. no, we're shy. <laughs> uh, uh, Kyle, you're at the Cumberest to Wild event. Uh huh. Okay, and uh, I've been saying to everybody, you know, you guys all look great today, but that wasn't always the case. Probably true with you, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. What was going on? Um, I just had a really bad alcohol problem, uh, and I got sober when I was pregnant um, with the girls, and so um, yeah, you know, I just I couldn't be the kind of mother that my alcoholic mom was to me, to my girls, so. So, I so you said something's got to change. Yeah. Yeah, and so what changed? What what'd you do? Um, I went to treatment, and then I started working a really serious program. Right, 12-step uh, model? Yeah, 12-step yeah. through Alcoholics Anonymous, and um, go to still, like, try to make two to three meetings a week, call people on the phone, work with my sponsor every week, all that good stuff. Right, right. And, and it's not easy. No, it's not easy, but especially it with twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, her sister's in there. <laughs> yeah. Was it her sister the one that was dancing? Yeah. Out in front? Okay, yes. that's great. We got some pictures of that on our YouTube version of this uh, of this interview, of this show. Cool. And, uh, cool. okay, so how long have you had sober now? Uh, like 19 months. 19 months. Wow, congratulations. That's a huge deal. Thank you. Really, really Thank huge you. deal. And uh, you heard about Come Rest a While how? Um, you know, I initially got sober at the uh, firehouse in Lake Oswego. Um, at one of the meetings there and um, just really close in proximity to come, come rest a while uh -huh. and so um, I started going to their Tuesday night meeting sometimes they have a women's meeting on Tuesday at 7 and um, just got to know a lot of the girls there good girls met Nancy oh Nancy is my sponsor sponsor oh wow so she's yeah. your grand sponsor All yeah right. she is awesome. my grand sponsor so yes. yeah well so you can't get away with anything no just a lot of association <laughs> there and yeah well, very good. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you, Monty. It was nice to talk all right, to you. All right. God bless you guys. And she is absolutely precious. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? What's your name? My name is Ildi. And Say it again. Ildi, I-L-D-I. Ildi. Ildi. Wait, okay, what nationality is this? I'm Hungarian, born in Romania. Yeah. Ildi. Ildi. Right. I-L-D-I. All right. Well, yes. you have been walking around here. Obviously, you are participating heavily in the Come Rest a While Harvest Festival. Yes. What are you doing here? I am the house manager of the Come Rest a While oh, Home. Oh, so... And we are campaigning for help to make sure that this home will go on forever. Wow. How long have you been house manager there? Since March. Wow, and yes. you still have your sanity. Oh, no, sometimes it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like being a house manager of a clean and sober living environment? Uh, sometimes it's fun. Uh, sometimes I say wait, I don't need to go to a play or a movie since it's happening all in the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Drama going on all oh, the yeah, time. Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, but it's and good. It, yes, it is good. It's good. And it's one, the most wonderful thing is to see the light coming on in the girl's eyes and see the change. The woman changing their lives and getting connected to their passion and changing their lives. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. Sometimes you have to be a little tough, though, right? Oh, yeah. That's not so yeah. pleasant. Yeah. You but, know. It, but tough, but with love. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We are talking about enforcing and developing in you the sense of responsibility that we belong together. We are not just on, out on our own. We are together. So it's good to know where you are, what you're doing. And have a smile when you say, come home, how are you? Right. And have a dinner together. And it's just to know that we are not alone. And Nancy was telling me, and, she, and she's mentioned this on several occasions to me in the past, how important it is sitting down, having a meal together. Yes. A lot of families don't even do that anymore. Yes. So it's kind of a rocky sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we have people who says, but I don't know how to cook. No problem. We have cookbooks. We have internet. We there you. you are. We yeah. teach you, and yeah. we can do it in uh, pairing up with someone who has done it before. And it's just the learning. How lesson. important is it to have these kind of events for Come Rest a While, like the Harvest Festival? 
very important. We depend on it because it, being a non-profit organization, our money, what comes in, goes out by paying rent, right. food, all the things what we need to pay for. So in order to not be in minus and to be able to support ourselves, we need this you, help. You, you bet. Now, on our YouTube version of this show, um, we have pictures of, of some of the items that are being yes. in the silent, silent yes. auction. And I have to say, like I did last year, uh, that this is one of the most organized, one of the most attractive silent auction setups I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Compared to the fact that I didn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, it's marvelous. Yes. It's marvelous. And yes. some of the items are absolutely worth much more yes. than and what the money is going to bring in, right? Yes, yeah. that's the yeah. love of people who support us. Yeah. They came yeah. and donated. And this is all from people what they gave us. And we... Yeah. Uh, had donations from individuals, from uh, companies, from organizations, and all of it is just from love and care yeah. for us. Amen. Well, that's that's wonderful. Okay, say your name one more time. Il D. Again. Il D. Il D. You got it. Il D. <laughs> yes. Hungarian. Yes. You have a beautiful accent. Thank I love it. Thank you so much. All right, Il D. Thank, thank you so much for thank talking you. with me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ildi from Hungary. I, I know you caught her accent. Uh, absolutely uh, uh, beautiful accent. And uh, she is the house manager for Come Arrest a While. Okay, uh, we're going to be listening to some violin music by Christy. Here we go. on violin. We interviewed her just a minute ago. See what happens. People get clean and sober. They get into recovery. And the next thing you know, they're playing violins. They're playing pianos. They're singing. They're performing. Uh, folks in recovery are some of the most talented, gifted, loving people that you will ever meet if they're just given a chance. And uh, they definitely are given a chance by the wonderful folks at Come Rest a While. Visit the website at comerestawhile.org, Nancy Engelman and the gang. If you are interested in the services of Come Rest a While as a clean and sober living environment, please visit the website and contact Nancy, and uh, they'll give you all the information. I will tell you that this is a... Uh, 
This is a group of people. This is a sober living environment that does it right. They hold you accountable. They hold you to the fire. But it's with love. It may be with some firmness because we need that as recovering addicts and alcoholics. Um, but it is with love. It is with grace. And it is with the utmost of compassion. This is the Monty Man. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, more from the Harvest Festival at TV Elks Club in Tualatin, Oregon, for the Come Rest a While fundraiser and event when we return. Hey, you! Yeah, you! It's the Monty Man from Take 12 Recovery Radio. And as a journalist, I get a ton of literature from folks to read every single year. And I simply can't get to everything. But there is one publication I never miss. It's the 12-Step 12 12 Step Gazette. 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 This is an award-winning recovery magazine for Philly, South Jersey, and surrounding counties. And is distributed nationwide and can be viewed even on the internet. Rehabs, detoxes, helplines, puzzles, classifieds, columnists, events, an hilarious humor page, and so much more. All found in the 12 Step Gazette. To get your copy of the 12 Step Gazette, visit www.12stepgazette.com today. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is the Monty Man here at Take 12 Recovery Radio. In 1997, Nancy Ingeman was introduced to Mickey O'Connell. Each had a vision to help other women in recovery. Mickey had a dream of a bed and breakfast for women in recovery called Come Rest a While. While Nancy always wanted a retreat house. With Nancy's expertise in nonprofits and the field of addiction and Mickey's business expertise, they developed Come Rest a While. The doors were opened July 1st, 2001, and Nancy came out of retirement to become the live-in executive director. Mickey now resides in Hawaii and continues to be an integral and supportive part of Come Rest a While. In February 2011, Nancy received the Red Dress Society Angel Award for Women's Advocacy, and in July of the same year, she received the Freedom Award from the DePaul Treatment Centers here in the Pacific Northwest for her work in addiction recovery. Once again, their website is comerestawhile.org. You can call them at 503 503- 6350102 located in Lake Oswego, Oregon, this is a phenomenal sober living environment. It has been my pleasure and the pleasure of my PR director, Marsha Meyer, to be a participant now in our second year in teaming up with Come Rest a While, a supportive community for women in recovery. KHLT Recovery Broadcasting and Take 12 Recovery Radio give a hearty approval to the work of Nancy and Mickey, and we support Come Rest a While 100%. In closing this event, I would like you to hear uh, the a cappella voice of Kayla, an alumni of Come Rest a While, as she closes out our event for 2015, the Harvest Festival, the Come Rest a While fundraiser. Here's Kayla. And you're married now. I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you things I couldn't give to you. Old friend, why are you so shy? Ain't like you to hold back or hide from the light. I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited, but I couldn't stay away, I couldn't fight it. I'd hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me, it isn't over yet. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. I wish nothing but the best for you. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes 
Cause it hurts instead. Yeah, you know how the time flies on me. Yesterday was the time of our lives. We were born and raised in a summer haze bound by the surprise of our glory days. I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited, but I couldn't stay away, I couldn't fight it. I had hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that from me it isn't over yet. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. I wish nothing but the best for you, too. Don't forget me, oh babe, I'll remember you said. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. Yeah, nothing compares, no worries or cares, regrets and mistakes that memories make. Who would have known how bittersweet this would taste? Never mind, I'll find someone like you. singing a cappella. Hi, hi, Kayla. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. That Thank you, you blew so my much. Mind. <laughs> oh, Thank oh, you. Okay, so tell us the name of that song. Um, Someone Like You by Adele. Okay, and you sung yeah. it a cappella. Yes. Which is like the bravest thing in the world to do. Thank you. <laughs> right, and, and you in reco- are you in recovery? Yeah, I just got a year on Monday. You just got, that's right. Yeah. They just said that. Duh, yeah. I'm brain <laughs> no, dead. You're it's been a long day. Totally um, so fine. congratulations. Thank you so much. So a year ago, did you think that you would be singing to a bunch of crazy people like us? Um, no, definitely not. Um, I was kind of on the fence about this recovery thing. Yeah. Um, we're not quite sure if that was it was for you, huh? Yeah, definitely not. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know if right. I wanted to do anything about it. So, so what, what was it that made you cross over the line and say, this is for me? You know, for me, it was give, being given the opportunity. Um, I was actually living in Come Rest a while when um, I relapsed. And so um, my sponsor gave me a choice, um, either tell... After two months of sobriety, once again, um, I had the opportunity to either tell the house or um, she would tell them. So right. she kind of gave me like a, you can either do it or, you know, I can't work with you and, you know, I'm going to. So anyway, it was kind of being given the opportunity to stay in a, a sober environment that was comfortable and that was loving and that, you know, um, just had my best interests at heart. So Right. Yeah. Right. right. So, so you come to to your, your boo-boo. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Could have been a much bigger boo-boo. Yeah, thank goodness. If you goodness. hadn't copped to it. Yeah. Right? And how were you treated? Were you treated with love and, and Oh, my gosh. And, I mean, compassion and understanding yeah. and so much love and... Um, you know, it, for me, it taught me that, you know, I can I can mess up, and that's, that's okay, that's part of it, but I always used to think that lying was, like, the best choice, you know, and, and right. it really showed me that it's better to be honest and yeah. to cop to my shit, so. So, if somebody, if somebody's listening right now who perhaps relapsed, yeah, and because of fear and yeah. embarrassment and shame, that's a big word, yeah, right, oh my gosh. Um, they, they, they don't know what to do, what would you tell them? Um, I would say the best opportunity for you to have a better life um, is to, you know, keep coming back into the rooms. People will love you. Um, people, if you tell people what you need, they can help give it to you. And if you don't know what you need, then that's okay. There are so many people who are helping, who are there to help guide you. You know, right. and um, I know that that's been given to me several times over, and and now hopefully I get the opportunity to pass that along. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, so congratulations much. so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. It was very nice talking to you. And how do you, you spell your name? Um, Kayla, K-A-Y-L-A. K-A-Y-L-A. Yes. Okay, I always ask because yeah. there's so many different ways to so spell. So many different ways. John, yeah, for instance. Exactly. No. <laughs> Kayla, thank you so much. You. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for your contribution <laughs> and for doing this thing and passing it on. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Kayla was uh, closing out uh, our show today here at Come Rest a While, the Harvest Festival. Please visit their website at comerestawhile.org. Sober living for women at its best. All right, my friends, thank you for tuning in. Into our next broadcast. This is the Monty Man on location in Tualatin, Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest, for the Come Rest a Well Harvest Festival, and I'm wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.